Hi, I'm Emma Donahue from A Music Blog Yeah, and I'm here with Kenny Vasoli of Vacationer, and we're going to discuss your new album, Relief, that you released in June. Um, so tell us that, how did your fans' reaction to your first album, Gone, affect your writing for the second album? I think once we started playing the songs from the first record live, we got a good sense of what gaps we wanted to fill in with this record, mm -hmm. because I was... Uh, really on a tip of making like a shoegaze kind of record on that first one. I wasn't afraid of making it too mellow. And then um, we sort of saw how the reaction, uh, you know, uh, affected the, the live show. Yeah. You know, not to say that it was bad, but, uh, you know, I see it with all shoegaze bands that, you know, there's just not a lot of action from the crowd. And like one of the, um, you know, one of the motivations to start this band was to have like a, a dance sort of project um, and I wanted to really toe the line between shoegaze and dance so we sort of tried to um, up that ante with the energy on this one. Well definitely the fan interaction is the biggest part of it to some extent that you have to see what people are liking and move from there but you know you've done your own thing and it came out great so <laughs> congratulations. You. Uh, glad you take it. Um, and you've been a band since you were 14 I saw is that correct? Yeah. So how have you like grown over the years like that's a long span of time and you've been doing music for a while how have you like changed did you start out in this genre or no I started out making like uh, like punk rock music you know since uh, pretty much since I was like 12 years old yeah. I, I'd been doing that kind of stuff and then like g got into a band that was touring you know I joined that band when I was 14 and I started touring at 17 wow. um, and then did that for like seven eight years wow. and then still made a bunch of rock and roll music after that and I just started tearing my voice apart trying to do it and I wanted to like sound like more gravelly and aggressive than I was kind of born to. Yeah, I mean that's hard like Adele I remember she had to have um, surgery yeah. a couple years back because she had some issues with her voice and that's so scary like the thought that it could just stop like I can't imagine that so that's probably why you transition. Yeah it's terrifying yeah. and uh, I wanted you know I want to do something where I can uh, I can sort of settle into my voice and and the problem that with playing with my past band too is like trying to perform old songs that I wrote when I was 17 it just like my voice is just really isn't up for it anymore I can do a few shows at a time but to try to tour with it yeah it just like it, I, I like can't even talk after shows like literally um. And I saw in a previous interview that you value relaxation, exploration, and love as your three most important values in your music. And why is this like the vibe that you're trying to target in your music? Well, I think that th those three things are all uh, they, they they all um, are like the the spirit that I want to uh, you know sort of capture with this. Um, so they're all things that. Um, it's just a good source of content for me. You know, those three things are just so important to me and can also be shaped in a way that other people can relate to them in like in all sorts of different instances in their life. So, and I, when I write music, I like to not be too specific about it so that people can put themselves into it. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of like angsty punk rock music out there. It's nice to have music that winds you down, but it's still like exciting. Yeah. So, um and you're an electronic band, but you still have like not the DJ rave type sound that's on the top 40, right. but you incorporate like a carefree sound. How did you find that perfect balance through trial and error? Or? Yeah, I mean, I think we stumbled on to the sound like pretty early on. Um, at, you know, like when we were first writing, we were kind of just like, you know, mimicking uh, influences that were that were, you know, just prevalent to us at the time. And who are your, some of your biggest influences? Um, like LCD Sound System, Beach House, Talking Heads, yeah. um, even like Curtis Mayfield is a huge influence on us. Like his production especially is something that, that we uh, really try to carry over in yeah. ours. And, and also the, all the Exotica guys like Martin Denny and Esquivel. Um, and, uh, and also like instrumental hip hop is a big thing for us, like Jay Dilla and um, yeah, Odyssey. It's nice to see that um, hip hop was one of your influences, yeah. but it carries through, you can see that. Yeah, all, uh, most of our tempos are in like the 91, 92 yeah. hip hop arena. Yeah. Um, and also I was recently at a photo talk where a photographer named Josh Wool said that if he's not um, photographing and creating every day, he feels like he's just wasting time. Is that how you feel or do you like need a break from your music at times? I'm usually pretty good at being lazy. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I come across like more productive than I am 
you know, like I've accrued a bunch of albums over the years, but like most days I I just sit around. In bed. Yeah, I just stay in my bed and like you know. That's the way to live. Yeah, watch Netflix, just like you know, just like other lazy people. What's your favorite show on Netflix? Right now, um, you know. Uh, I was get, I like like sort of had this weird period where I was getting into Frasier and and wasn't even really enjoying it just sort of like I was chuckling like every like 20 minutes and it, it just sort of put me to sleep so it was just my bed with Netflix is just like something you do to pass the time it doesn't yeah. have to be your favorite you just end up blindly watching it yeah I just finished the office and the entire thing hilarious I just but the office too. Really? it gets so bad at the it end does. Oh. when Michael Scott's gone it's not even worth it yeah totally <laughs> And uh, one more question: What is one thing that fans would not know about Vacation? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, okay, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, but, you know, we've. I don't. Know, yeah, this isn't like this isn't a, like serious dirt or anything. But <laughs> we, we, as a band, we try to get brunch every day that we can. Oh, that's nice. And we uh, we're big Yelpers. So we yelp out like the best brunch spot, like in, within like uh, you know driving distance. And it lands like right in between when we wake up and we have to get the sound check. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice like family dinner, at, yeah. you know, like earlier in the day. In what um, state or country did you find your best brunch spot? Ooh, oh man, we had one today that was so good. Where did we go? It was called. Uh, oh, Ken, your memory. <laughs> what was it called? Well, New York City has amazing food, yeah. so no doubt. <laughs> you throw it, you throw it around. Oh, Field, Fieldman's? Fieldman's. Something like that. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, <laughs> so, I think that that was what it was called. It was so good. Um, oh, and then we went to one a couple days ago called Somewhere in Time, and I think that that was... That's a in, cool name. Yeah, I think it was in Providence. Mm. That was delicious. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, thank you again, and everyone check out this video at amusicblogyad.com. See you later.